Hey guys, Hibbilly Dude here, and today I'm going to do a quick little review on this Essie Azula. This is a pretty slick little knife. I've had it for over a year, um, so I've got to use it quite a bit. I just haven't got around to doing a review yet, so I figured today was the day. But uh, anyways, I've been pretty fond of it so far, and I thought I would just kind of walk you guys through what it comes with, some of the specs, and, uh, and then give you a little knife porn of this thing in action. So stick with me. I imagine most of them come like this if you order them online, but it comes with pretty sweet little box from Essie. Um, it says made in Idaho Falls, Idaho, right on the box. It has a bunch of information about the company. This is actually my first Essie knife, but uh, I have read a lot of reviews, and apparently they are one of the better companies as far as customer service. They will replace your knife, no questions asked, if you break it. Of course, they hook you up with a bunch of stickers and uh, business cards, a little catalog, all that good stuff in there from Essie and Randall's Adventures and Training. Let's just get straight to the knife. Okay, so this is the Azula. This is the original. I did get the stainless version because my intent for this knife was to uh, use it canoeing or fishing. And so I really didn't want a, a carbon steel version, a high carbon version that was going to get, I was going to have to just take care of more um, and watch out for rust so I went with the stainless steel version but uh, I, I don't have any regrets on that right now you can obviously get this in uh, 1095 carbon so I got this information straight from the SE website and I'm just gonna read it off to you the overall length is six and a quarter inches the blade length is 2.63 inches the thickness is 0.156 inches the steel on the stainless steel version like I have is s35 VN and they previously used 440C stainless. Uh, the weight is two ounces without the sheath, which is phenomenal. That's one of the biggest reasons I bought it. It's such a tiny little light knife. Um, the finish on the carbon models is a textured powder coat. Um, it looks like it's fairly aggressive from the pictures. I don't know because I don't have the carbon model. I have the stainless. But uh, this is just kind of a nice matte, shiny stainless finish. Um, it works really good. I have not had any issues with any kind of surface rust or anything like that. Um, and I, honestly, I'm, I'm really happy with the, the finish on this stainless version. Uh, so it is a flat grind. It has a flat grind edge. It comes with a molded sheath that comes with a belt clip. And it has a lanyard hole down here on the uh, pommel end of the, the handle, which these are the full full length scales. Um, they are removable. You can get the skeletonized, just the skeletonized knife handle. Um, where you can buy these full length scales or you can get the bikini uh, model scales, which I'll put a picture up. But basically it leaves the giant lanyard hole at the end of the uh, tang fully exposed. So you have a lot more room if you want to, you know, hang it on something or put a carabiner on it and hang it from your backpack or whatever you want to do with it. Um, I wanted the full length scales a little more something to grab onto. I've got big hands and this is a little baby knife so I figured the more meat I could get on the handle the better off I am. So this is made in Idaho Falls, Idaho by Rowan Manufacturing. They seem to have their heat treat down from everything I've read. Um, they really know what they're doing. They make good quality products and it's made right here in the good old USA so if that's important to you then uh, you'll be happy to know that they're made right here at home. Currently, this is January 2022, and I just checked the SE website. They do have the Azula for $98 on their website. Um, it's currently $60 on Amazon if you get the skeletonized carbon version. Uh, and I paid, a year ago, I paid $80 for this stainless steel version with the handles um, on Amazon. You can get uh, full-length G10 scales for these. You can get my Carter scales. I can't remember exactly what it had these labeled as. It's the olive drab colored ones. Um, I did get the full length, and uh, they've held up really good. They just they just tighten on there with some Allen Allen screws, um, so you can remove them if you want and have the skeletonized version. Also, I do just want to say that I'm sure the stainless steel version probably runs a little more than the carbon version because this S35 stainless. Um, it, it costs a little more than 1095. Obviously, you can find a lot of knives cheaper out of 1095 than you can out of S35 stainless. So, um, if you're wanting a stainless version like I did, then you're probably going to pay just a hair more than the 
the $60 versions that you can find the carbon steel. So let's talk about the sheath for a minute. Okay, it just comes with a plastic molded uh, retention snap-in style sheath, which honestly I'm, I'm a fan of. I like it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this setup for, for this knife. It works really good. It's fairly thin if you remove this whole back plate. Um, you can remove that and then you just have the thickness of this the sheath itself if you just want to use that to uh, You know put a lanyard on through this giant hole hang it from your neck a lot of guys will carry it to your backpack Their backpack strap when they're hiking like this so they can just remove it when they're hiking My and my intentions were to use it either as a neck knife or as something that I could just clip onto my belt when I'm in my canoe so that way I'm not having to dig into my pocket for my my pocket knife and in that regard, it's been good. I've even carried it, just the whole thing, in my pocket. Just shoved the whole thing down in my pocket and carried it at work the first few weeks that I had it. Every time I get a new knife, I like to I like to just kind of put it through the paces of, of my daily life, whether it's job or stuff around the house or whatever. And so the first couple of weeks, I carried it like that. Um, rather than carrying it on my belt, my belt at work, I decided it would probably be, draw less attention if I just put it in my pocket and used it like that. So I did. And uh, it's really, it's it's not a very big knife at all. So you can do that if you want to do go that route. But it comes with a really heavy duty, um, it's got a lot of good, a lot of spring to it, a lot of retention. Um, belt clip, So you, and it's pretty generous in size. So you can, you can clip that on pretty much any belt you would like. And it's not going to go anywhere. You can also clip it onto the pocket of your pants and just wear it on the outside of your pants. And I don't feel like it's going to go anywhere as long as you're not, you know, as long as you're being reasonable. Um, but overall the little sheath is not bad. Okay. So one thing I want to mention about this sheath is that this carry clip is ambidextrous. You can swap it to either side. So that way your handle is facing whichever way you would prefer. So if you want to carry it on your left side, so you pull it out with your left hand, which is the way I normally carry my knife. My pocket knife is usually my, my left pocket. Um, you can do it like that and you can just clip this to your, to your pocket carry it like that you can clip it to a belt whatever or if you want uh, if you want to carry it on the other side you can always pull these screws out right here swap this to that side so that way your handle is on this side for right-handed carry um, and another really cool thing I like about this sheath is they give you enough up here for a thumb ramp now it's not it's not uh, got any jimping or anything like that but it works fine and what it does is it allows you to have something to push so you can pop the sheath off. A lot of companies don't do that. And then you're struggling to try and, you know, especially if it's got good retention like this does. It's got good, really good retention. Um, and then having that is nice because you can push just hard enough to break the retention. And all you gotta use is the tip of your thumb. It has just a small enough blade that you can wear it as a neck knife and it doesn't feel like it's all over the place or it doesn't feel like you got something hanging down you know from your sternum to your belly button so it's compact it's small it's lightweight i found that the blade geometry works out really well for shaving and making feather sticks um bush crafting kind of things little notching and, and stuff like that around the camp so i haven't had a chance to use this yet for game processing but i imagine it'd be really good in that aspect uh, it's small enough that you know, I feel like you could use it definitely for skinning, um, separate and hide meat, light deboning, and obviously definitely food prep and stuff like that around camp, around the kitchen. It's got a decently thick spine for a knife with a two and a half inch blade, so I really like that. I, I'm a fan of heavier spine knives. I would rather be um, over thick than, than too thin, just because I feel like that allows you to do more with the knife. So anyways, that's the Essie Azula. Go out and get you one. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.